Art. You love it, I love it, Silent Hill. You love it, I love it. Today, we're gonna be talking about some of the artistic inspirations for the Silent Hill series. This video is gonna be a little rambly, so there's not gonna be like a lot of annoying jokes or anything like that. And just as a little warning, a lot of the comparisons and theories I make in this video is basically just me schizo posting. I would be more than happy to hear your theories. If you disagree with me on something, or you wanna add on to something I said, or point out something I miss, I would actually really appreciate that. Let's get right into it. Hieronymus Bosch was a 16th century Dutch painter whose works have become synonymous with the Flemish primitives, an art movement coming from the Netherlands somewhat inspired by the Italian Renaissance, or more specifically High Renaissance. But it was like very much its own isolated movement, with unique characteristics that set it apart from the Italian greats. It's just that a lot of great Dutch painters would often receive some sort of training in Italy. Not much is known about Bosch besides basic things, like the fact that his father was a painter and that Bosch had his own artistic workshop. Because of this, we can't even, with 100% certainty, say which paintings Bosch painted himself and which ones were simply made by students working under him in his workshop, as not all paintings attributed to him have his signature. In his most famous painting, The Garden of Earthly Delights, we can see paradise, earth, and hell. And you gotta love the stark contrast between these scenes. We love God! Ah! Some people don't agree that this panel represents earth, but I don't know. I don't really care. It is said that Bosch's depictions of hell were a big inspiration for Silent Hill's rendition of the Otherworld, with its various figures in some form of torture and its extremely oppressive nature. Something I found interesting is how it is seemingly never-ending. It gives this feeling of inescapable dread, which reminds me specifically of Silent Hill 3, when you go to the Otherworld and you see these never-ending chasms, an aesthetic choice that I've personally always loved about Silent Hill 3. It gives me the same feeling as a John Martin painting. John Martin was amazing at giving this grandiose sense of scale, like in his painting, or I guess in this case engraving, Satan presiding at the Infernal Council. How the chandeliers slowly fade into the distance, giving you no escape from whatever the nightmare you're in. I also want to touch on the amount of nakedness in Bosch's paintings. Just hear me out. In the earth panel, it takes kind of a hedonistic, pleasurable meaning. In the Garden of Eid, it takes on a more innocent and pure meaning, but in the Hell panel, it gives this extreme sense of vulnerability and powerlessness. I would argue Silent Hill 2 does something kind of similar. The sexy nurses aren't very sexy. This makes sense since they are a representation of James's sexual frustration during Mary's hospitalization, something he feels incredibly guilty about, something that makes him feel kind of gross. So kind of like the Garden of Earthly Delights, the nakedness stops having a hedonistic, pleasurable meaning and begins to have something else. In Silent Hill 2, you could say that it still has somewhat of a hedonistic and pleasurable meaning, but it's different. Here it's incredibly primal and unromantic in nature. As for the creatures, I didn't see any that kind of popped into my mind as being an inspiration for a Silent Hill enemy, but some of them do have like a similar kind of vibe. If you find any, please let me know because honestly, Hieronymus Bosch is such a fascinating artist, so I strongly recommend you get some scans of his paintings and just zoom in to see what kind of little adventures the naked people are getting up to. Next artist. In 2001, IGN had an interview with the Silent Hill 2 artist Takayoshi Sato, where he mentioned some artists that inspired the look of Silent Hill 2. One of these artists being Rembrandt. Rembrandt was a 17th century Dutch painter during the Dutch Golden Age of Painting. During this time, religious or biblical paintings were kind of looked down upon, or even in some cases forbidden. Although I will never applaud any kind of social outlawing of a form of art, especially if it makes it into law, this did lead to some very creative, but more importantly, very introspective paintings, with more scenes of daily life. Paintings that regular people could relate to. Paintings that presented very grounded questions, with much less formality. And you know, we get some 17th century drip. This already kind of reminds me of Silent Hill 2, particularly the switch in subject matter from Silent Hill 1 to Silent Hill 2. We go from learning and interacting with a centuries-old cult that shaped its members into who they are today to learning and interacting with fairly mundane people whose personal life experiences brought them to Silent Hill. First, let's look at Artist in a Studio by our boy Remy. 
we see here probably Rembrandt himself. He really likes to draw himself, by the way, in his studio. And he seems a little sad as he looks to this big canvas in front of him. The interesting thing about this piece is that in real life, it's actually pretty small. Definitely not as big as the canvas we see here in his studio. In this way, Rembrandt shows us the anxiety of an artist, the burden of the creative. Even to make this relatively small piece, there is an arduous psychological process that the viewer will never see when enjoying an artist's completed work. But for this video, I'd like for you to look at the overall tone of the painting. It's slightly muted colors, it's spacing, it's soft shadows, it's serene yet incredibly lonely which I think describes the overall feeling of Silent Hill 2, especially in the times you're exploring or solving puzzles, you know, the downtime of the game. Next painting I want to look at is Old Man in Red, and it's an old man wearing red. That's kind of the reason why I'm showing it. It's just an old guy, but looking at his face, he seems to be so deep in thought. What is he thinking about? Is something troubling him? We will never know what's behind this complex expression. What has happened in his life? Does he have a family? Was he in a war? Maybe he's just senile, I don't know. My point is, Silent Hill 2 also chooses to focus on the individual, how behind a seemingly mild-mannered guy could be a complex roller coaster of emotions and past experiences, which leads me into the next painting. Lucretia was a noble woman in ancient Rome. She was married to Colatinus, and Lucretia and Colatinus were considered to be the ideal Roman marriage. A marriage that many aspired to have, as they were incredibly devoted to one another. Not only was their marriage praised, but Lucretia in specific was kind of characterized as the ideal Roman woman. Unfortunately, a man named Tarquinius, son of the last Roman king Lucius, ripped her in her bedchambers. Lucretia, feeling extreme shame over her stolen and broken honor, decided to take her own life. Many say this is what caused the overthrowing of the tyrannical Roman kings, making the Kingdom of Rome a republic. Throughout the years, many artists have painted Lucretia in her last moments, but they did so with a clear vision of beauty and purity. Rembrandt also did this, but he also made another painting of Lucretia, a much more somber depiction of her suicide. One that did not romanticize her anguish, one that did not paint her beautifully but respectfully, a representation that did not make her a martyr, but one that showed an abused young woman whose pride had been stolen in her last moments of life. I think you know what character I'm pointing at, obviously Angela, as she also went through something quite similar, and the game tells us her story honestly without romanticizing it. It doesn't need to. After all, it's not an epic, it's a tragedy through and through. Andrew Wyeth is one of the most well-known and rightfully praised American artists of the 20th century. Wyeth was a realism artist, not in the common sense of realism though. Realism was an art movement originating in France after the French Revolution, and it sought to depict life in its most concrete form, rejecting romanticism entirely, which previously dominated the French arts. It depicts mundane life no matter how ugly or how beautiful. You could say it represented life naturally, as the movement is often called naturalism as well. This made the movement very varied, as you could get a beautiful afternoon in Luxembourg, or a widower overwhelmed with grief, young women picking potatoes and chatting, or a dark reality of the yellow fever. Looking at a collection of Andrew Wyatt's paintings, you can notice an overarching theme. All of his paintings have this kind of muted tone that I think fits very well with Silent Hill 2 in particular. Let's take a look at his most famous painting, Christina's World. Andrew Wyeth was inspired to make Christina's World when he saw one of his neighbors, Anna Christina Olsen, crawling across the field belonging to the Olsen household. Speaking of the Olsen household, you might think it looks a little familiar. Well, that's because it was used as inspiration for Alessa Gillespie's house in Silent Hill 1. Perhaps we could say the image of Christina, who had a degenerative muscular disorder, and why she's crawling across the field, could have maybe inspired the character of Alessa? Probably not. But it's an interesting thought nonetheless. And also, this is a video essay, so I have to make these completely baseless comparisons. But looking at Wyatt's overall discography, it definitely doesn't scream Silent Hill 1. Its overall tone is much more reminiscent of Silent Hill 2's lonelier and more introspective atmosphere. Especially when you listen to Silent Hill 2's soundtrack and flip through some of Wyatt's paintings. It just fits so well, I strongly recommend you try it out. It's really a great way to enjoy his work. And finally, we get to arguably Silent Hill's greatest inspiration.
Jacob's Ladder is a psychological horror directed by Adrian Lin. It tells the story of Jacob Singer, a Vietnam vet whose crew was used for a secret government test of a new drug called Ladder. It was supposed to create kind of super soldiers with elevated aggressiveness and motivation, but instead it made them confused, paranoid, and extremely aggressive. In this film, we go through Jacob's symbolic, metaphysical journey through heaven and hell, as he's dying from a bayonet wound inflicted by his fellow platoon mate. The name of the movie, Jacob's Ladder, has a clever double meaning. It of course means Jacob, our protagonist, and the drug called Ladder. But it can also mean a story from the book of Genesis, where the biblical patriarch Jacob dreams of a ladder leading to heaven. Jacob's Ladder is arguably the biggest influence on Silent Hill, not just in their horror aesthetics, but also in terms of psychological horror and biblical references. Even small references to Jacob's Ladder make it into Silent Hill. For example, this scene at the beginning when Jacob is crossing the subway tracks and a train filled with these faceless creatures almost runs him over. It kind of reminds me of Heather doing kind of the same thing. Hell, this whole scene of Jacob in the subway reminds me of the subway level in Silent Hill 3, from its eerie silence to its randomly blocked passageways. Of course in the game they serve a gameplay purpose, but still. The hospital scene, which in the movie is supposed to represent hell, is very reminiscent of not just the Silent Hill hospital, but of other areas in the game. The chain link in the ceiling with people chasing Jacob is incredibly reminiscent of the other world in Silent Hill 1 and 3. The name Jacob is, as we talked before, a biblical name, and its anglicized version is James. And it just so happens that James wears an olive green military jacket, very similar to the one Jacob wears throughout the movie. It's even theorized that either James or James's father Frank was in the Vietnam War, particularly because both of their ages could match up to being drafted into Vietnam. And of course, we know that Jacob is, in fact, a Vietnam War vet. But let's look at more symbolic similarities between Silent Hill 2 and Jacob's Ladder. Jezebel in the Book of Revelations is associated with false prophets, adultery, and sexual immorality. Jezebel in the film is kind of a sexually provocative character that leads Jacob to not confront his past and let go. I don't like things that make you cry. This, of course, reminded me of Maria, a manifestation of James's deep want to see his wife again, a more sexualized version of his wife, representing his sexual frustrations during Mary's hospitalization, and possibly a way to ignore what he did. She's essentially, like Jezebel, a false prophet. However, some people also see Maria as kind of a guardian angel, which also fits quite well with what Louis says to Jacob. If you're frightened of dying and, and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. But if you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. Which in turn could also fit quite well with Vincent's line from Silent Hill 3. Monsters. They look like monsters to you? <gasps> oh no. Don't worry. It's just a joke. But we're not going to open that can of worms. Gabe is Jacob's dead son. Gabe obviously comes from Gabriel, and I believe Gabe could symbolize Archangel Gabriel, the Archangel with the power to voice God's will onto men. So it would make sense that Gabe is the character that keeps Jacob on track and leads him to heaven. I would argue that Laura from Silent Hill 2 plays a somewhat similar role. I mean, I know she probably just symbolizes innocence or whatever, but she also kind of keeps James grounded since she's the only other person in town who, like James, has a real connection with Mary. And she's the only one who isn't negatively affected by the town, as again, she is just an innocent child who doesn't feel extreme guilt or dread over her past. She barely even has a past. Anyway, there are other connections to Silent Hill I could make, but I'm gonna choose to end this here. If you wanna maybe see like a second part to this video, let me know. Thanks for watching.